everyone, thank you for taking time out of your busy trading day, uh, a very busy trading day for sure. Um, my name is Chris Furhey. I am a trader. I've been trading for almost 40 years. I'm a writer. I've been writing for more than 40 years. I do write a weekly newsletter called Pulse Options, and um, my publisher has me under contract to, to occasionally do marketing events. So I'm, I'm going to tell you some at the end. I'm going to make an offer for you to uh, join us. Having said that, I just soon teach. I love teaching, and um, we're going to teach some. Now, I did not come up with a title for this presentation. My publisher did. He said, Secrets for Fast Profits on Steroids. And, and the steroids came about because of our conversation. I said, hey, look, I want to show people how to make money in a non-painful method, right? How how you can you can make money, you know have gains without so much pains. And he said, "Oh, it sounds like steroids." I said, "Well, yeah, it does." But and then he's okay. That's the, that's the title of your presentation. So, ha having said that, um, I, I I've got to follow certain rules. I'm you know again, my publisher sets cer certain things, and our attorney sets up another thing. He says. All securities used in this presentation are for educational purposes and are not to be construed as a recommendation to buy, sell, trade any of these securities, right? I will not be using stock XYZ. I will not be using stock ABC. I will not be using hypothetical things. I will use true examples. Don't go out and trade them with real money just because you heard it on this webinar. So again, um, I write a weekly newsletter. It's called the Pulse uh, Pulse System. I've written a book. Uh, film lots of videos. I write this weekly newsletter. The newsletter has a watch list where I I I do the math to take the large universe of stocks down to a small universe, and then I focus on five, give or take, each week, and I review them week after week, and and I'm I'm constantly educating. I'm trying to educate. All right. So in addition to writing this newsletter, I have an advisory, right? Uh, I call this a valuable system of specific trade entry and exits. I probably should call it an expensive system of specific trade entry and exits. Um, this, this costs a lot of money. Um, I, I actually do not know how much it costs. I get, a, a, again, just a small royalty for doing it. I'm not going to try and sell you either of these things. My whole point is that I'm going to try and educate you today. Right? And so I, I put a lot of thought into this. and you're all here trying to gain knowledge, right? And some of you know what you know. So some of the things I'm going to present today are going to be what I call, yeah, duh, right? Yeah, duh. I already knew that. But understand this is a one-room schoolhouse. There are hundreds of you listening. Some of you have traded maybe as long as I have, you know, for, for decades and decades. And some of you have maybe never traded real money at all. So Again, one room schoolhouse. I'm going to teach to all of you. Some of you might know some stuff. I apologize if it's a yeah, duh. But I, I hope that everybody gets to learn something that they don't already know. But maybe more important from knowledge is wisdom, and that's learning to know what you don't know you don't know. Right? So I, I give a great example. Mark Cuban, right? He's on Shark Tank. He owns the Dallas Mavericks. Where where did he get his money, right? Mark Cuban kind of invented internet radio, but he sold his company to another company in the dot com boom and got paid in restricted stock. And lots of other dot com people came up with a company came up with an idea and sold it to bigger dot coms and got paid in restricted stock. Mark Cuban knew about an option strategy called a caller. Right? A caller is when you sell a covered call, you use the premium to buy a protective put. Right? Mark had restricted stock that he could not sell and his company that he traded into basically crashed, but he sold a covered call, used that money to buy a protective put. In, in a sense, he pushed off the sale of his company past the time of the re end of the restrictions, and, and he's a billionaire because of it. I have talked to 
a number of dot-com millionaires that are dot-com broke because they weren't able to cash in after they cashed in. They did not know about this. They did not know what they didn't know. So again, we're going to give everybody some knowledge. Some of you are going to have some yeah does. Some of you are going to learn some stuff and hopefully every one of you gets some wisdom today. Right? Everybody knows that the simplest way to make money in the stock market is buy low, sell high. Right? Buy low, sell high. And when it comes to trading stocks, it, it's with the exception of collecting a dividend, a stock profit's pretty one-dimensional, right? It's price. You buy low, sell high. Uh, theoretically, you could do it in either order by shorting the stock first, right? But that, that gets complex. That has um, certainly infinite risk. We won't go there, right? Option profits are multi-dimensional. You'll have some trading strategies that look to sell option to gather the theta decay, right? You'll look at other strategies, you know, might do credit spreads, condors, you might have guys buying uh, deep in the money calls as a stock substitute, right? My system that I basically teach is that I buy out of the money options because they have the most gamma, right? Gamma is one of the option Greeks. Now, I'll, I'll simply name them here without getting into them. There's delta, theta, vega, gamma, and rho, right? And I make tons of money off gamma, and, and most people don't even know about gamma. Again, I've, this presentation isn't going to be about gamma. I've got some wisdom, right? I think gamma is maybe knowledge whether you know it or you, or you don't know it, but you know about it. I, I want to get into some wisdom, right? So in the past, and, you know, one of the reasons to trade options is how much money do you use? You use a fraction of what it does cost to trade stock. And then, and then you can't lose it all. And unlike a futures contract, you're not on the line above and beyond what you pay for your option. So again, historically, options have been used as a leveraged directional play, right? And I, I'm referring to the buying of options. Again, there are strategies that are involved in selling options, and I'll talk a little bit about those. But basically, I'm going to be talking more about buying options. Now. To make sure everybody knows what I'm talking about, uh, there are two types of options. There are call options. You can buy an option. You can sell it. I'm going to discuss buying it. Call options give the buyer the right to buy a stock at a set price for a set period of time without obligation. The set price is known as a strike price. The set period of time is, exp is expiration. Again, you're not obligated to do so. Basically, um, you can consider a call option like a bet the stock is going up in price. A put option gives the buyer the right to sell the stock at a set price for a set period of time. Again, set price, strike price, set period of time is expiration. And you buy that, you have the right to sell the stock, but you're not obligated to sell stock. And while it can be considered a bet that the stock is going down, one of the great reasons to buy options is an insurance policy in case the stock goes down. All right, so understand my system is based on the fact that there's tens of thousands of stocks or more than 10,000 stocks out there. You want to focus on just a few, right? I, I was listening to the tail end of the presenter before me right, because I wanted to make sure I was on time in case he went early, and he mentioned that he's looking at less than a dozen stocks. Hey, I applaud him. There is no reason that it should be your life list goal to trade every stock out there, right? Your goal should be to make money, and so you want to reject most of the stocks, right? The big, huge universe, I simply reject anything that does not have an option available. I've whittled it down. I then whittle my list further, right? I whittle it further, and I whittle it through what I call my PULSE system. PULSE is an acrostic. An acrostic is an acronym on steroids because it spells something. P is for profit potential. U is for upside reward. L is low risk. S is setups and strategies. E is for events, entries, and exits, right? It becomes sort of a checklist, right? It becomes sort of a checklist for you to follow, right? A system, a true system here. 
Now, again, the Pulse system, I've, I've written a book, written a bunch of videos, I write a weekly newsletter, and I take that large universe, I whittle it down to the top five, we review it, and, and we're constantly educating. So real quick, P, profit potential, right? This is a screenshot from June of 2014 showing Amazon call options, and the column on the left that is highlighted, right, is the opening price. The column on the right is the high price for the day, right? And, and you can see that the high price is three to a hundred times higher, right? The, the high is 300% to 10,000% intraday the, the, the open. And, and, and real quick, in, in real time, I think the August 203 put, the August monthly 203 put on SPY, the S&P 500 tracking stock, was three cents on Tuesday, and I think it hit three dollars today. There's a hundred shares per option contract, so that went from three dollars to three hundred dollars in four days. That's potential, right? And and if if four days is too long, you know, here's a screenshot of a VXX option went from eight cents to a dollar ninety in in just a hour and a half. Another VXX option that opened the day at two cents went to a buck fifty. Right. There's lots of profit potential in out-of-the-money options because of all the gamma that's there. Right? So, upside reward, P-U-L-S-E. I look at a minimum for setups that should make 100%. Right? I, I, I don't want to risk money unless I can double it. And in doing so, I want low risk. Right? low risk. Many of the trades we look at are pennies per share. Again, I gave you the example of the August 203 put from this week. Now you can look it up. 203 SPY put on Tuesday was three cents. Today it hit three dollars and change. And, and the, the market's still open. I don't know what it's trading at. But if you buy it for three cents and you're wrong, you're out three cents. Now the reality is if it got to a buck and you didn't sell it, you were probably fairly greedy at that point in time, right? And we have a mathematical formula that we give people that shows us how to pull money from the market to, to show you which stocks meet the criteria, right? And again, right now I'm sharing knowledge. We're not yet to the wisdom. And I say this is white box because it's not a black box, you know, hidden secret. I, I share my math, right? I, I want... I want to teach everybody so that they can do this on their own. And so in doing it, we're looking for setups. Now we look for a stock specific setup, right? And we look for a market wide setup. So Wednesday was the Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC, minutes uh, release from the meeting they held three weeks prior, right? That is a market wide setup. It's sort of an event setup, right? We can have stock specific setups because of a technical chart setup, right? I, I'm, I'm not going to get into charting here. I just want to make you aware of those. Now S is also for strategies. Now we can trade directionally or non-directionally. Directionally we, we can buy a call because we think a stock's going up. We can buy a put because we think the stock's going down. Or we can trade non-directional where we buy both the call and the put because we don't know that it's going up or down. We just are expecting it to move more then the options are pricing. Now, non-directional strategies come in two forms. They're a straddle, which is a call and put from the same expiration, same strike price. A straddle is a non-directional bet a stock will move. Again, we need the stock to move up high enough that the call will gain more in value than the put would lose, or we need the stock to drop enough in value so the put will gain more in value that the call will lose, or we just need it to move and we exit the two separately. Besides a straddle, there's a strangle, which is a call and put, same expiration, but different strike prices. Now in my methodology, my system, we always use the put with the lower strike price than the call. Right, that might not be industry you know, wide, but should be, but but absolutely 100% of the time, that's how I teach my students to do it, right? P-U-L-S-E, 
right? Well, excuse me, strangle. It's a non-directional stock. A bet will make a breakout move because the, the, it's the, the, the options are a little bit out of the money as opposed to right at the money, right? P-U-L-S, E. Now we're at E for events. Stock specific could be an earnings announcement. It could be um, a news release, again, or we could have market-wide like the FOMC this past Wednesday. So an earnings event, here, let me tell you, most of you guys know, right, if you've been around trading at all, that quite often a stock will make a very big move after its earnings announcement, right? And so a lot of you that are already trading options might look to buy some options before the earnings announcement I can mathematically prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt, right, because math can't be argued if you can accept it, that you're better off buying your options after the actual release than before. So here's an email I got from a student. He bought 20 LinkedIn contracts. He paid $1.45, right? He's, he's on the West Coast. He bought them four minutes after the open. One of our rules is we wait about five minutes after the open. Right, he paid $1.45 and he sold them less than two hours later for three times as much at $4.55. Same day he bought the Twitter call option after, the key word is after, I should have bolded, highlighted, under, underlined, italicized, but I, I put up these emails unedited. He said after the stellar earnings and the gap, he bought at five minutes after the open, he paid $0.61. Cents and he sold the same time at $1.45, not quite tripling his money, but to me that's a fairly fantastic return in a fairly short period of time, right? So E is events, E happens to be earning is one of those events, but E is also entry, time, and price. We typically buy our options at specific times of day. We typically buy our options near the open of the day so we can capture that day's movement, or we buy them near the close of the day so we might capture a gap the next morning. We will typically buy our options at a specific price. Again, we only buy our straddles if the stock price is equal to the strike price. So we have very defined rules, right, on entry. Now exit, exit becomes a little bit different because this is where you have money on the line and some of you are more greedy than others. Some of you are more conservative than others. Some of you are more or less experienced than others. So quite often, a lot of my students and myself will hang a target order. We calculate ahead of time before we get in what we think it's going to go to. So we hang an order to sell. Or if we, we let something run, we'll put a stop order underneath it and, and keep raising the stop as we're going. Right? And so here's an email from a student. He said, I read your newsletter and decided that triple witching Friday sounded too good to be on the sidelines. Now, that was an event. It happens four times a year. He said he had fantastic two months of trading that could cover a year's worth of income. So on the Thursday before the close, again, the time aspect, he made his move, and here is the results. He says, total profit for four hours and 15 minutes in overnight trade was $66,850. So Again, this proves part of the system, the pulse system. Now, again, pulse system, P, profit potential, U, upside reward, L, low risk, S, setup strategies, E, events, entries, and exits. I do believe I've given you knowledge. Now I want to give you wisdom, right? The extra S is sizing. Now, I don't have... P-U-L-S-E, I don't have S-S sizing, because here, here's the thing, in my newsletter, I'm trying to teach students setups, I'm trying to teach them, you know, how to buy low, how to sell high, I'm, you know, and, and, and I'm teaching a lot about the market, I try and educate. In my advisory, I cannot say, hey, buy twice as much of this as you normally would, because then I'm, instead of, of giving a recommendation using freedom of speech, using freedom of the press, right, my First Amendment rights, I would be given unregistered investment advice. So I, I can't size and say, you know, buy more. So sizing kind of gets hidden a little bit, and I think this is what 
most people don't know that they don't know, and that's how to size. Now, I find that because I get a lot of emails from students. I talk to brokers, and typically, students will do 10 lots, right? You know, I showed the, the earnings event. The guy said, I bought 20 of this and 20 of that. Well, typically, I find people just buying 10 lots, or I find people putting in a specific dollar amount per trade, whether it's $250 or $500 or, or 2500 or 5000 You know, people tend to consistently do the same thing, and that's not necessarily the best. So here's a typical trade from a student of mine, right? For, he says, great call on your update. That's my newsletter regarding Chipotle Mexican Grill and FAS. She says, so at 9.35 a.m. Eastern Time, again, five minutes after the open. That's our standard operating procedure. He says, I bought 10 of the Chipotle Mexican Grill call or put options for $1.95, right? That's 100 shares per contract, so that's $195 a contract. 10 contracts is $1,950. He paid $15.35 commission. He also bought 10 FAS puts for $0.35, cents. that's $35 a contract, 10 contracts, $350 plus $15.35 commission. He says, as the attached screenshot shows, I closed out both transactions for a one-day net gain of $6,538.44. Fantastic. Right? So I should be able to draw on this. Let me, if I click the right button. Right, couple things. We can see that his buys, right, are five and six minutes after the open. We can see that his sells are the same day, four minutes before the close. So he's following our standard operating procedures of entering and exiting at certain times. Right, I can teach you that there's a specific time that has an advantage. Now the nice thing is. Right? If you have a job, you don't have to be attached to the screen all the time because you can know ahead of time when to place your trades. Now, a couple things. Let's look at this. He paid $1,965 for his CMG options, right? $1.95. He sold them for $670. After commissions, he brought in $6,684. So he basically made Oh, about $4,700 on the CMG. Now the FAS, right, he also bought 10 of everything, right? 10 of everything. These he paid 220, excuse me, excuse me, he paid 35 and he sold for 220, so he paid 365, he sold for 2100. Now mind you, the first, the CMG ones that he bought 10, he kind of tripled his money. The FAS ones, he made like six times his money. He put 10 contracts in each. What if he would have split his money, right, his $2,350? What if he would have split it equally, bought less CMG, bought more FAS? He would have made more money. But the thing is, he gets in that students, he, right, as, as many, get in the habit of trading the same size over and over again. They might not have the wisdom to th know that they should consider different ways, right? So more student trades. Here's a regular trade. This is an FCX option. I have a student, bought this at $0.04, cents, sold it at $0.32, cents, right? It went from 4 to a high of 35, closed at 30. Now you'll say, you know, somebody will look at this and say, hey, wait, Chris, that's November 7th of 2013. Show me, show me a more current trade. I said, okay, that's reasonable. How about November 7th, right? 2014, same underlying stock. The reason I show these, it's the one year away day to day, this option here moved from six or eight cents, depending if you bought it at the close or you bought it at the open, to a high of 36. It pulled back a little bit, closed at 32. We hit FCX over and over again. So I teach my students how to trade FCX. Someone might say, okay, Chris, how about a more current trade? Right? Here's, here's a current trade with a student that learned sizing. 
It says, on March 20th, 2015, I bought 500 contracts of the FCX March 17 half call for 15 cents. He sold them the next day for 80 cents. He put in 7,500. He pulled out $40,000, his net profit of 32,500 before commission. And I'm sure the commission added up to something, but he did not care, right? This student has learned sizing. All right, so I, I have a program. We call it WIN. Um, I think it's weekly income now because it's dealing mostly with weekly options. And on this past Wednesday, I sent out an email in the morning. This is a copy of that email. I said with SPY down around 208, I do expect some reaction back going into the Fed event, right? The Fed event was the FOMC minutes release that was being held at 2 p.m. Eastern time Wednesday, two days ago. I said, therefore, I am nibbling on some call options. I like the 208.50 call at 80 cents, the 209 call at 60, and or the 209 and a half at 40. I then reminded students something they should already have learned from me that the higher strike price options, right, being the 209 and a half or the 209 have a lower cost and they have more leverage, but a smaller percentage gain on the more expensive option does add up to more actual money. I then went on to say, if the stock move $1 higher, SP, SPY should, these options will have this amount of gain, 55 cents, 45 cents, and 35 cents. Therefore, right, in my advisory, understand in my advisory, I don't pick all three of these because some people in my advisory have less than $25,000 in their account. And if I picked all three and we got out later that day, boom, they're done trading for a week. So I pick one of them, right? I happen to pick the 209 and a half call. But for my win, my, the email alerts that come with my win program, I listed three, told the advantages or reminded of the advantages of each, kind of giving a profit target, and therefore a student could match up to their own account what they were looking to do, right? In addition to being able to make these trades, they get to, you know, sit on my shoulder and or look over my shoulder and see what I'm thinking and, and what I'm coming up with, right? So later that day, I sent an email out saying, needless to say, right, this is unedited, I, I put the word top. Anyway, needless to say, I was a little early in buying my SPY calls, but I'm profitable now. First, let me give you the lows that each put in after our email, right? The 20850 went from 80 down to 66. The 60 went from, uh, the 209 went from 60 to 48. The 209 and a half went from 40 to 33. I then said that since I was a little early, I'm going to lower my exit prices, and I changed it to 120 for the 208.5, 95 for the 209, and 70 for the 209.50, right? I got an email from a student later that day. He says, Chris, I bought the 208.50 calls at 71 cents, right? Nine cents less than my uh, maximum entry suggestion. And then he put in a sell order of $1.20 and he was filled, right? He made um, quick mathematics, that's, what is that, 49 cents? Yeah, more than 50%. And, and, and it took about an hour and a half, right? The, the reality is all three of them hit their targets and then some. So it was, it was very possible to double one's money, right? But learning to trade is not just learning to know which underlying to buy, it's learning how the different strike prices move, right, both good and bad, to get a feel for what matches your personal situation, not that everybody should do exactly the same as me, right? Everybody should do the same as what they do. And so I, I, I want students to learn how to size their account through the use of real world examples, right? And so here's an email from a student. 
he's now trading for for a living right he said I want to take a few moments to share my enthusiasm with you I've been a student of yours for some time now and I have had a number of aha moments right that aha moment is like an epiphany he said he said aha moments that you assured me would happen if I continued to learn your principles right this student has been with me for some time he just just grind it out, grind out, grind out, and it clicked for him. Right? He says, you taught me how to trade options through several strategies. Right? They've consistently provided a steady string of winning trades. Not every trade was a winner. Right? Everybody. Understand that if I made 100, if I had 100% success, I would not be writing a newsletter. I would be in a yacht, you know, a 200-foot yacht cruising the world making my trades. Right? But the key is that the losers are small in size and the winners are big, right? So that happened to him. His biggest aha moment happened this summer. He discovered that if he believed the probability of success was assured, then he should use a larger percentage of the, his account. He goes on to say that at the start of June this year, his account was just below 40000 Now, this is a fairly sizable account, right? So not everybody's got a $40,000 account. My strategies can be used if you've got a $4,000 account. Some of my strategies can be used if you have a $400 account. Anyway, he goes on to say he's steadily increased each trade over the past 10 weeks, and the results are that his account is now $64,000. That's, that's a 60% gain in 10 weeks, not on a trade, but on his account. And that's because he's learned the wisdom of sizing, right? Wisdom of sizing. And part of that wisdom comes from your experience of doing it over time. You're going to learn to size. What we try and do is help you learn how to size faster, right? So the, here's the bottom line. Bottom line, you could do it on your own, right? And a lot of a lot of people listening to me and listening to other speakers are, are here to do it on their own. They're just trying to glean information, right? So you can say they're trying to do it with some help, glean a little information here, glean a little information there. Some of you, right, will go out and buy my $97 a quarter newsletter, you know, getting all my books and videos because they want some help. Some of you will will either hire me to, as an advisory or, or someone else for an advisory and, and if, if you want to have it done for you an advisor is a great way of doing it now my, my advisory might not be the best for you but if you understand how the trader that's running the advisory sizes that should be the determining factor right not not only his results but how he sizes that should be a determining factor whether that's the advisory you should go with or not, right? Or you can own the information, right? You can own the information. Now, a couple of things. I see people are sending me questions, and I plan on answering the questions after I get through my PowerPoint. I don't have too many more slides, and I'm, I'm on schedule to be able to answer questions. So, so don't worry about that. I, I will answer, but I don't want to do it at the expense of missing some valuable wisdom possibilities, right? So having said that, um, I've talked to you that I, I've got a newsletter. I'm not trying to sell you my newsletter. I've told you that I have an advisory. I'm not trying to sell you my, my advisory. And, and I'm, in reality, I'm not trying to sell you anything. My publisher, he wants me to sell. I'm, I'm going to tell you something right here, right now. Everybody listen very carefully. Whether you purchase something from me or not, I will not notice it, right? In the scheme of things, I have so many students that picking up one or two more or losing one or two, I'm not going to notice, right? I will not notice that you're there other than you'll have an email access to me. You'll, you'll be able to send me email questions, right? I often call my students on the phone and my students become my friends. I, I won't notice whether you're there or not. So I don't want to say I don't care whether you buy or not, but in a sense, I don't care whether you buy or not. It doesn't mean anything to me. 
but it should mean something to you, right? And and Kevin can put this link in your chat. You can you can go to it later. I just I just want to get it out there. I want to I want to teach you a, a little bit more, right? But a couple of things about this opportunity, right? First off, there is a full money back guarantee, and and our guarantee is based on the fact that the specific trades I present to you will allow you to double your money. If you can't do that, we'll give you your money back. Now, my my problem, like with my advisory, is that some of the some of the clients tell their broker, say, hey, buy 10 of whatever Chris want, is, is, is recommending. I'll have some of the clients say, hey, put $500 into each trade that he recommends. So let's say I, I, I come up with a trade of an option that's 10 cents, right? If a guy buys 10, he's going to buy, he's going to put at risk $100 because he's putting in 10. If a guy says, I'm going to put $500 in every trade, he's going to buy 50. Now, let's say the next trade is an option that's $3, right? The guy that says, I want to buy 10, he's now putting in 3,000, right? The trade before he put in 100, now he's putting in 3,000. The guy that says, hey, put me at $500, he's either going to buy one at 300 or he's going to stretch and buy two for 600. Right, so so he went from 50 contracts down to one or two, and so it it kind of drives me nuts, right? That there's this sizing issue, and to me that's that's the negative drawback of the advisory, and that's why I think the advantage of this win program. In all irony, though, the double your money back guarantee is is based on you buying a consistent amount, right? And and they have a formula for that, and I've been doing this a long time, and, and the specific recommendations I give allow you to double your money over time. Again, I, I refer to Wednesday's uh, SPY call options. I gave three specific entries and three specific exits, right? I, I also sent out in the email some um, other trades that were a little less specific, right? They're not counted in my guarantee. They're for more advanced students, right? I don't want someone that's not there yet to go into it, right? I'm trying to hold your hand almost by spoon feeding you, right? But but I, I want people to to learn how to size. Now, I, I, again, to trade, you have to be decisive. You have to take a calculated risk, if you, right? So I'm I'm presenting this as to people that instead of doing it on their own or doing it with some help or having it done for them, I'm doing I'm presenting this as a system for you to own it, right? And to be a trader, if you want to be a trader, I'm going to accelerate you, you know, your knowledge base by accelerating your wisdom. And to be a trader, right, you have to be decisive. You have to press the button, the buy button at some point in time, right? The sell button's easier because fear or greed will come in and you'll press that button. But to, to put the money at risk, you have to be decisive. You have to take a calculated risk. And therefore, that's part of the reason we have a full money back guarantee is that if I can't deliver the goods, right, it, it wasn't worth it, you're not risking anything other than your time, right? But you have to be decisive enough to take the action to join. Now, if you looked at that uh, package that we're offering, right, it talks, it, it focuses on the weekly emails that I send out, right? I'm, I'm, I'm giving you my Pulse newsletter, I'm giving you these videos, and the Pulse newsletter I write on Saturday, I write again on Saturday and I review the week before, right? I review, I make picks and I review the next week's activity, right? And I say the emperor has no clothes because if I make a bad pick, I can't hide from it, right? I see other guys selling newsletters saying, hey, look, I think Apple is going to, you know, $700 for these reasons, you know, in the next three years. Buy my newsletter 
and then but you got to wait three years to see if he's right or not right another guy saying this is the next Netflix you know buy this now and five years from now you'll be happily rewarded to me that that that's worthless information because you cannot double check and verify right so I love my newsletter because I make picks each and every week I pat myself on the back because I do a very good job of, of making picks right but I also I, I will not hide from my mistakes and I constantly educate if, if you're a student of if you subscribe to my newsletter you, you you know that I educate now having said that I am a trader I traded two billion dollars for a bank in Europe now let me tell you I did not manage two billion dollars I traded stock I traded an average of five million dollars worth of stock a day for a couple of years right and at one point in time I think my, my, my biggest overnight holding might have been 50 or 60 million dollars worth of stock and my, my bank had had rules I could do whatever I wanted as long as I could prove to the risk department that I would not lose a million bucks right I had a risk based trading they loaned me money at 200 basis points above LIBOR which is basically two percentage points annually over London interbank offertory rate I, I call it the European prime rate right as a European bank they loaned me money at two percent I could do whatever I want use as much money as I want as long as I could prove to them that I wouldn't lose a million dollars right after Oh, six months, you know, to a year, they raised it from one million to two year, two million, and towards the end, they raised it to five million dollars. So I, I would take positions in stocks, tens of millions of dollars a time. Now, now, interestingly enough, I started trading for the bank on September 10th, 2001, the day before 9/11. Right? I put on a big, huge position. I bought a bunch of stock, but I bought a bunch of protective put options, and I bought them based on a formula. And the bank was terrified, but when the market opened, right, a week or so later, my put options had gained so much in value, they offset any of my loss in the stock, and the bank was really happy with me. Now, I traded that system for a number of years, and I was well paid for it, and then I went, right, I went out on my own and I tried to get in what we call a Darwinian challenge right a Darwinian challenge what it was UBS Warburg at the time had a billion dollars right one billion that they wanted managed and they said look we're gonna get ten guys to each manage a hundred million dollars and the starting salary was two million dollars a year now they wanted 10 guys and the way they did it is they were going to give a hundred guys 10 million dollars each and and kind of let them trade 5 million on a short leash and then a Darwinian challenge is survival of the fittest the guys that weren't making money what they were managing would be taken away and given to someone else until there was finally 10 guys thousands of the guys applied right it's called an emerging manager fund thousands of guys applied I took my results from my European bank and I got to meet the guy in charge right now I had a friend right I have a friend that um, got me in the door and I showed them my track record from trading in Europe but my contract with my European banks said that I could not tell what bank I worked for because they had a branch in Luxembourg and in their constitution they have bank secrecy laws and I was I had a big huge fine if I told anybody the bank I was working for so I gave my results to the guy and he looked at it and he turns to me and says you traded in Europe didn't you and I said I said well yeah I said I told my friend Bill you, sh you shouldn't have told him he said no he goes I figured it out on my own he says what you're calling a track record we call a trading history he says I look here and he says I, I see you're averaging you know five million dollars a day but on this day here you used forty million dollars so we're gonna assume that you had forty million dollars available to you every day for two years 
and you just decided to keep 35 million of it on the sideline and it basically took my results and and just it decimated them and I did not make the rejection list to become one of these hundred traders but I took that trading system I filmed a video profiting from seemingly worthless options and I have taught that to my students and one of my students sent me this email just recently and I called it I call this a gold mine because you're li it, you're literally trading stock you're making so much money with so little risk right here's a student now he says I traded this system daily since approximately 150 weeks now not experiencing a loss Now I have to qualify that that's not experiencing a week a loss for the week he said there are trades where nothing has traded in the system based on the mechanical right to me I try and set up everything mechanical that way emotion does not play an effect right the mechanical param parameters governing my trades but no losses in an up and down market an average week of profits runs four thousand dollars including the weeks where there's one or no trades his maximum weekly profit has been eighteen thousand five hundred dollars I've, I've talked to the student he's been running this system for almost three years right when he started he wasn't making four thousand he was making four hundred he worked his way up and he's sizing up but he's made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in my win system I'm not going to give you the emails how to do this, right? I'm, I'm going to give you this video how to do this, and I will do a webinar, and this student has agreed to be interviewed during that webinar so that you can see not what Chris the Guru does, but what you might do based on the fact that you're more likely to be like one of my other students. So real quick, if Kevin hasn't posted this already, here is the the offer link I'm gonna go look at the question right to see what questions I can answer somebody even said 500 contracts would have a huge commission you know when you make thirty two thousand five hundred dollars I don't think 500 contracts the commission you know is gonna be a thousand bucks right uh, Someone says accounts that are below 25,000 are not allowed to buy and sell in the same day. You're wrong. Accounts under 25,000 are absolutely allowed to buy and sell in the same day. They're limited to how many per week, right? And um, you know this is the thing. This is why I sent out a number of different trades in the updates, and then you can choose which ones fit best for your scenario because you might have a $2,500 account, you might have a $25,000 account. I don't know what size your account has, right? That's why I'm, I'm not a registered investment advisor. I don't know the specifics about you. I have to use freedom of speech, freedom of the press, again, First Amendment rights, to publish my opinion, and it's your responsibility to act upon it as itself, right? Um, someone mentioned something about gamma, right? He said, gamma is highest at the money, lower in the money and out of the money. If, if you understand gamma, how the world teaches gamma, but I guarantee you, if you go to the CBOE's website, go to their options calculator, click on the definition of gamma, it will be wrong. They will say gamma is a rate. Gamma is not a rate. Gamma is an amount. And gamma, the highest potential aggregate gamma comes from out of the money options. They have the most gamma that's where we make these options go from three cents to three dollars right someone said could you show more recent results I guess that was an older question because I like to think showing results from earlier this week um, continuing down how do you determine the direction movement on underlying stock in our non-directional strategies we do not need to determine right on Wednesday, just prior to the FOMC event, I also sent out an email saying, hey, you can buy this straddle, excuse me, this strangle or this strangle in this price range, 
but the FOMC event is going to be so fast that I will not be able to give you exiting instructions. Having said that, just as it peaked, I sent out an email saying, hey, sell your calls. You can sell your calls for more than you paid for the calls and puts. You'll have your puts for free, right? You can then, and then later that day, the puts, the stock went down. I said, hey, you can sell your puts. You can get out now or you can hold them overnight. And boy, it would have been a great thing to hold them for the rest of the week because they just skyrocketed in price. Someone said, are you going to have a video on technical analysis? My publisher has actually just given me the okay to make uh, uh, videos on technical analysis. In my newsletter, which is part of this program, I have some very unique technical signals, uh, lit fuse uh, being maybe the, one of the most famous ones, and I have a thing I call the color count, and um, you know those show up in the newsletter all the time. All right. Um, I guess someone asked where can they can revisit this. It's my understanding that this is being recorded. Someone says, are you doing credit spreads alone? Actually, I do not do credit spreads at all. Not only am I not doing, I'm not doing them alone, I'm not doing debit spreads. Right? I am buying options, which brings up an incredible point. If you do credit spreads, if you understand the risk of a credit spread, it's that short option going against you. When you, if and when you get killed, and if you do credit spreads long enough, you're going to have one hammer you. It's because of the gamma in that option. So at a minimum, if you do credit spreads, you should probably buy my newsletter to get the books that come along with it so as to, to, to minimize your risk in doing credit spreads. Right, so the, the the Pulse newsletter comes out every week. The when includes the Pulse newsletter. It includes email updates during the week, plus these other videos. My goal is to get you to have your account over twenty five thousand, so that you can try this stock trading system, right? That just generates huge amounts of money with very very little risk. If, if you've been a newsletter subscriber for some time, I, I talk about it in a, a section, occasionally the one-room schoolhouse. I teach people to trade in pre-market sessions and, ex, and the after-hour session to trade stocks against options they own. That's part of the newsletter, or excuse me, part of the uh, uh, video package that comes along with Win. I hope I was helpful. Again. A lot of you know things, right? You know already about call options. You know about put options. Maybe you learned something new about straddles and strangles being non-directional. Maybe you just now learned a little bit about the power of out-of-the-money options and all the gamma that are there. And again, if you're a credit spread trader, you've ever been on the wrong side of one, you've learned the hard way. But hopefully you've now learned the wisdom and you start putting it into your mind that you start thinking about sizing, right? You, you, over time, the experience, you will gain the experience. What we're trying to do with this program here is accelerate your understanding and experience by me conveying my understanding and my decades of experience to you with these weekly newsletters.